We call to order the public hearing on the Committee on Electoral Reform and People's Participation. Um, in as much as we merely suspended at the previous hearing, let's uh, now uh, carry on. Um, and uh, we recognize Attorney Dana Alberto, our Legislative Committee Secretary, to acknowledge the presence of our resource persons who have attended physically as well as uh, by remote. Um, we welcome once again Chairman George Irwin Garcia, as well as Commissioner Maceda, and the rest from Comelec. Thank you very much. Here also are Namfrel and the other representatives, uh, including Lente and the other NGOs, who will be properly and individually recognized by Attorney Dana Alberto. Um, I see on the screen um, Senator Bongo's uh, presence, so we herewith acknowledge the presence of Senator Bongo and invite him to interject at any point. Thank you. Once more, Attorney Dana, please. Good morning. The Committee on Electoral Reforms and People's Participation would like to acknowledge the presence of our distinguished guests, namely from the Commission on Elections. We have Chairman George Irwin M. Garcia. We have Commissioner Ernesto Ferdinand P. Maceda Jr. Commissioner Nelson J. Celis. We also have Attorney Tepisto E. Elnas Jr. Okay. Attorney Rafael B. Olaño, Attorney Divina E. Blas Perez, Attorney Rex C. Laudianco, Attorney Maria Teresa Irayola, Attorney Frances Carolyn M. Aguindado Arabe, Attorney Eliza S. Sabile David, Attorney Mazna Luchavez, Attorney Rose Ann Alejandro, Ms. Ira Abigail Fernando, Ms. Angelica Cruz, Ms. Arifa M. Jamil, Attorney Joanna Saribong, Mr. Erwin A. Aguilon, uh, uh, Comsec, please, um, as you call their names, can somebody please uh, indicate their presence as I need to see you? Yes, who are all the uh, lady attorneys? You mentioned the whole slew of them, but yes. uh, nobody seemed to acknowledge. Are they present physically or remotely? Sorry, attorney... Leia Villalon, sorry, I have to okay. go back. Voila. Okay, she's not here. No, I need to know who's here and who's not. Okay. Is attorney Leia Villalon or anyone from the NYC present? Voila. Okay. Voila. Okay. No, no. You, you've called out their names, but apparently no representative has turned up. Is that I'm correct? From Comelec, please. No, no, I'm uh, not talking about Comelec. Comelec is well accounted for. Um, I'm uh, asking about uh, NYC. Walang tao rito, no? Is that correct? Wala pa po. Fine. Yeah, don't call their names if they're not yes. here. Yes, ma'am. Uh, anyone from DILG, please? DBM, ma'am, we have... A no, third. I said the uh, DILG first. Tapusin lang natin in sequence. Walang DILG, walang SK, okay? Carlo Nograles... Regrets. Okay, so that's fine. DBM, I think Trisha's here. Yeah. Yes. Uh, None from Bureau of Jail Management and Penology. They're not yet here, ma'am. But they can. I'm sorry, I can't understand you very well. From BJMP, ma'am. Bureau of Jail Management. And wait a second. Tapusin muna natin ang DBM. DBM muna. Trisha's here. Who's the other one? Joy. Is there a Joy Rico? Yes, ma'am, uh, our staff, ma'am. And I'm with attorney Christine, ma'am. Attorney? Christine po. Okay. So, tatlo kayo? Ganun ba ang daming tanong? Hindi, yeah, okay lang. Thank you okay. po. So, tatlo kayo? All right, thank you. BHM, BJMP confirmed, ma'am, but they are not yet here. DILG, ma'am, um, they submitted their position paper. Okay. Um, from DM. Ano from... sabi ng position paper? I have no copy. 
Ma'am, kakasubmit lang po, ma'am. Sorry? Kakasubmit lang po. O, oh, sige. Bigyan ako ng kopya, okay? Yes, ma'am. Uh, sumunod ang uh, Department of Migrant Workers. Yes, ma'am. We have Assistant Secretary Ay, Jerome A. Pampolino. Thank you. Okay. Good morning, Madam Chair. Good morning. NCIP confirmed them, but uh, they are yet. A certain Mr. Paul Kabugao is listed. Is he here? Ah, uh, there. Okay, thank you. A NCIP confirmed, but they have yet to be present, ma'am. The National Council on Disability Affairs, we have Attorney Rhea Ramos. Yes. Okay. Uh, attorney... Good morning, Madam Chair. Attorney Rhea Ramos from NCDA. Ramos? Ramos. Ramos? Ramos, ma'am. I'm sorry. I'm... Uh, Ramos. Okay, thank you. Thank you, madam. Okay, uh, Liga ng Barangay? Liga ng mga barangay sa Pilipinas, um, we sent an invitation but we did not receive a confirmation, ma'am. Okay. All right. Um, Philippine Commission on Women, they confirmed that, but they have yet to arrive. Yes. Um, they have not, ba? They sent an invitation, yes, ma'am, but we, they have yet to arrive. Okay. All right. Mas maraming absent kaysa present, ah. <laughs> anyway, okay lang. Sige, next. Sino? Oh, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of uh, Senator Rafi Tulfo, thank and you, uh, thank you very much for attending. And yes, carry on, please. Sino pa yung private stakeholders natin? Yes, from Coalition for Senior Citizens and Elderly, we sent an invitation, but um, they did not confirm as well. Sorry, sino? Um, from Coalition for Sir Senior Citizens and Elderly, we sent them an invitation, ma'am, but we did not receive a confirmation. Okay. Yes. Um, from Tuklas Katutubo, uh, they sent their regrets. From Comelec Employees Union, we have Mr. Mark Christopher Ramirez. Good morning, Your Honors. From Are the other guys listed also with you? And dito ba? Nam friend. Bonifacio, Bonifacio, Esternon, and Panis. And dito ba lahat? They will not be able to make it ah, today. Okay, that's fine. You're here. Okay. Sige. From BPCRV, um, we sent an invitation, man, but we did not receive a confirmation. From Lente, we have Miss Brisa Rosales. She's Good morning. Nam friend, ma'am, uh, Mr. Angel Averia Jr. Good morning, ma'am. Uh, no, yes, Chair uh, Averia is here. Okay, check. And Lente, Attorney Brisa. Okay. Uh, there's another name listed here. Um, Attorney Ona. She cannot come uh, ah, okay. for the day. That's Thank fine. You. You're here. Yeah, you're usually here anyway. Okay, thanks very much. Um, we sent invitations to Democracy Watch, IPER, Ideals, and SENPEG. No, it's okay. Just tell me who's here. Okay. Um, we have Le uh, LEAP confirmed, but has yet to... No, so uh, your entire last sir. page is not here. No, lahat dito wala? Wala pa po. Okay. All right, thank you very much. And uh, we continue the hearing uh, from uh, last year. Uh, it's been a while. And uh, we are now uh, going to inquire into the status, firstly, of the preparations for the 2023 Barangay and SK elections. Um, let's start with that, if that's OK with our uh, Senator Tulfo. Unless you have some uh, uh, preliminary statements, there's an agenda. We're going to go over the uh, preparations for the SK and Barangay elections muna. Pakatapos nun, yung ibang bill spending for alternative modes of uh, voting for vulnerable sectors, mga buntis, PWD, at saka seniors, and IIP. And uh, yung uh, huli, yung Comelec field offices na lahat naman sang ayon kaya lang walang pera. So, yun ang uh, agenda for the day, uh. Um, all right, so um, who is going to present on the part of Comelec? Madam Chair? 
Yes. I yes. have an opening statement. Yes, uh, make... please. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, good morning, Madam Chair, Senator Amy Marcos, to my other colleagues present here today, if there are any present. Um, first of all, allow me to commend all the efforts of this committee under the able leadership of our chairwoman, Senator Amy Marcos, for resolving all previous issues and overcoming erstwhile hurdles surrounding the series of postponements of the Barangay and SK elections. Finally, we can look forward to conducting the Barangay and SK elections on October 30, 2023. It is my earnest hope that the Commission on Elections, the primary guardian of our ballots, will be able to carry out its constitutional mandate smoothly and efficiently. I'm positive that our officials will ensure the conduct of an honest and peaceful elections, just like what we have witnessed during the presidential and local elections last year. I'm also for the digitalization of our polls this October. If not full, at least majority of our barangays will be automated to ensure accuracy and credibility of outcomes. With regard to the proposed bills on providing accessibility for the vulnerable sectors of our society, I'm also manifesting my full support. It is crucial that we give every Filipino citizen the chance to exercise his or her right to suffrage regardless of physical condition. In the future, uh, in the true spirit of democracy, it is incumbent upon us to protect and preserve the right to vote. I just want to emphasize though, that in giving our seniors, PWDs, pregnant women and IPs full accessibility, adequate safeguards will still be in place by not allowing human intervention as an added tool to cheat or rig the results. Minsan po kasi, ginagamit ng mga mandaraya na palusot yung mga PWDs o seniors para manipulahin ang kanilang balota. Kunwari, tutulungan nila yung senior. Pero sa totoo lang, gusto nilang ibahin ang ilalagay o isusulat sa balota. We need to provide accessibility and simultaneously safeguard the sanctity of their ballots. Finally, I fully support the bills amending the omnibus code such that the power to select office spaces for provincial and local elections officers be stripped from local government units. Dapat naman talaga komelek or at least ang national government ang pumipili at nagpapatayo ng kanilang opisina at hindi si mayor o si governor. Kaya minsan pagdating ng eleksyon, nauna pa si mayor na nagbibigay ng opisina na nakakaalam ng resulta ng eleksyon. Kaya mas madali din manipulahin ang resulta ng eleksyon dahil utang na loob ni election supervisor ang magandang opisina na ibinigay ni mayor. We should put a halt to this practice and amend the law. We must uphold and preserve at all times the independence of our Kamalek and its officers. They must remain free from duress or any form of undue influence in order to conduct free, fair, and honest elections. That's all, Madam Chair. Again, good morning and thank you, Paul. Yes, thank you very much for the spirited uh, support given by our uh, colleague uh, this Monday morning. We're all uh, raring to go. Uh, thank you very much. At uh, ito nga, um, hihingi kami ng update dito sa Comelec. Maraming iba't ibang balita tungkol sa ating barangay elections. Unang-una, nagtataka kami kung bakit automated bigla ang pinilot test dito sa barangay at SK elections. Ang pagkaintindi natin, eh, manual to. Kaya biglang uh, bakit automated? Uh, ang pagkaalam ko, magko-cost-benefit analysis kung kakayanin para sa mga malalaking barangay uh, tulad sa Quezon City at iba pa kung saan na uh, halos kalahating milyon. Tama ba? kung minsan ang botante. Okay, tapos, uh, alam ko rin na may binaril, tama ba, na ambush isang municipal election officer sa Maguindanao bago mag-Valentine's the day before. So, uh, uh, we are hopeful that uh, there's a quick report on this. I hope it has nothing to do with the upcoming uh, Barangay and SK elections. And finally, I think an election is about to be conducted um, this week, is that correct? February 25 in Cavite for uh, uh, our now Secretary of Justice, uh, Boeing Remulia. So uh, 
if you could uh, uh, apprise us of all these developments very briefly so that questions can be propounded as well thereafter. Thank you. We invite Chairman uh, George Garcia. I believe uh, you will make the presentation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, Senator Rafi Tulfo, gandang umaga po. As far as the committee is concerned, we are almost 100% uh, prepared for the Barangay SK election of October 30, 2023. As of today, we were able to print 86.59%. I repeat, 86.59% of the ballots for the regular voters. And as far as the Sangguniang uh, Kabataan, we were able to print, as of today, 90.62% of all the ballots for the SK. And so we are hoping to be able to print everything, all the ballots, before the end of February. Um, I recall that uh, last year you told us that some training had been conducted for teachers and other election officers who would uh, supervise the conduct of both elections. Uh, Are they still in place or will continuous training be undertaken? Uh, with all due respect, uh, Madam Chair, uh, as far as the training of the teachers are concerned, we had not yet proceeded with the training because of the possibility at that time that there will be postponement of the election. And so... Baka Kala ko doon nagastos yung ilang gastos nung napospone. Uh, Hindi no, you, natuloy yun. Madam Chair, no. Uh, doon po nagastos sa printing of the ballots including personal services of the commission. We, pero, hindi, pero magagamit naman yung mga balotang yun. Hindi naman sasayangin. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, Madam Chair, last week, the Comelec and Bank passed a resolution authorizing the use of the 13 million ballots for the uh, regular voters and 8 million ballots for the SK, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, thank you. Uh, sapat ba ito yung 5.7 na new appropriations ng 2023? Chinecheck ko lang yung budget ninyo kasi doon tayo na para nung uh, nakaraang taon uh, dito sa tungkol sa budget ng pagpopospone. So, Chairman, is uh, there any update on that development? Madam Chair, as far as the uh, COMELEC is concerned, Barangay and SK election, the, com the national government gave us 8.449 billion pesos for the conduct of the Barangay and SK election, supposedly by December 5, 2022. However, because of the postponement, uh, the budget as approved by uh, the Senate and the House of Representatives and signed by the President, uh, the 5.7 does not contain, Madam Chair, the, the additional budget for the Barangay and SK because um, accordingly, in the law, it says it will be the subject of a continuing appropriation and supplemental appropriation. So how do you uh, seek to finance this uh, Barangay and SK elections coming short? The only new appropriations, as you mentioned, are the uh, is the 5.7 billion uh, already stated as new appropriations for Comelec. Wala nang iba pa. Although, uh, as we're well aware, you have continuing appropriations from the previous year, as well as uh, savings and other monies. Uh, that's right, uh, Madam Chair. As far as the Comelec is concerned, uh, of the 5.7, 1.250 was allotted for the construction of our Comelec building. And uh, dun po sa kakulangan kung ano man po, because uh, during the previous hearing, we said that perhaps we will be spending more or less additional 2.8 billion pesos. So gagawa na lang po namin ng paraan, Madam Chair, mula sa COMELEC savings, additional, the budgets of the budget uh, remaining with the commission elections. We're going to still wait, Madam Chair, for the report of our field personnel for the pilot for the uh, project of precincts. Doon po namin malalaman, Madam Chair, if we're going to add the uh, precincts and or ilan yung mga voters per precinct. Ito nga ang inaalala ko, katulad ni Senator Tulfo, na kapag nagkulang ng budget ang COMELEC, ang tinatakbuhan yung LGU, kaya nagkakaroon ng uh, yun, collusion, conspiracy, nakakapraning na eh. Dahil dito, uh, nais natin malaman, at uh, if I may request from uh, Chairman George, uh, exactly where and uh, how much will be derived from your other sources, such that we can be assured that this will be a fair and free election, uh, not financed by uh, uh, 
um, random uh, political forces. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Definitely the COMELEC, uh, we will commit. The COMELEC will not be asking for any help from L any LGU because that's prohibited. What well, we can only ask from the LGU support from the, for the conduct of plebiscites, but not uh, the conduct of regular election or even special election. So the remaining, the Cool. Pero kasasabi mo lang kulang yung budget na ibigay sa inyo, pati yes. yung new appropriations ninyo, hindi sapat. So, saan mang gagaling? Although nga, meron naman kayong savings at saka continuing naman yan. At meron rin kayong uh, iba't ibang koleksyon, di ba? So, may pagkukunan, ganun ba? Yes, Madam Chair. And uh, likewise, we reserve the, the right to respectfully ask our Congress for an additional budget as the need arises, simply because, Madam Chair, at this point, we can just estimate, but we cannot particularly pinpoint how much we're going to need, simply because although there were additional 1.6 million registered voters from December 12 to January 31, uh, hindi pa po sinasubmit ng mga tao namin from the field kasi po meron pang election registration board hearing by March. So, and doon pa po namin malalaman kung yung buong 1.6 approved po ba yun o meron pong, um, o eksakto po bang approved yung 1.6 o may mababawasan. And then ilan po yung madadagdag sa bawat presinto o magkikreate po ba ng additional precincts. So that being the case, uh, may I reiterate the request that uh, the budget and the funding sources be submitted to this committee so that uh, in the little time left, uh, we are able to access uh, the funds uh, in time, as well as be clarified that uh, no undue influence will be exercised by uh, the uh, local and other politicians involved. Yes, Madam Chair will comply, we'll submit uh, the said documents, Ms. Madam Chair. Uh, pinagtatakahan nga namin, tulad ng sinabi ko kanina, yung bakit mag-automated the uh, election system, nakasanayan na natin na manual kapag barangay at SK. Bakit biglang may automated pilots tayo? Uh, that's right, Madam Chair. There was a, a uh, House resolution uh, calling for the Commission election to conduct the automated uh, election for the Barangay and SK. So it came from uh, the House? There was, yes, uh, Madam Chair. Yes, may I know who the author was so that we can trace it? Yeah, uh, Madam Chair, it was Congressman uh, P.D. Barsago. Yes, of, that's right. Yeah. He's my counterpart in the Oversight Committee, in the Joint Oversight. I, know. Uh, I think he found it uh, unwieldy and time-consuming to do it manually, given that these barangays are enormous. Is that correct? Uh, based on the resolution, yes, Madam Chair. But we, we, we disagreed. We said we cannot conduct the automated election in the entire country for the BSKE at this point. We have no budget, we have no resources, we cannot procure the necessary uh, documents and materials for purposes of the Barangay and SK, and only we have 98,000 machines presently. We will have to lease the additional machines in, in the event that there will be a, an automated Barangay and SK elections. Um. I'm a little perplexed. Does that mean na uh, yung iba, yung malalaking barangay, may plano kayo kung okay yung uh, pilot testing, may plano kayo na maging automated samantalang yung uh, maliliit at yung karamihan barangay mananatiling manual? Ganun ba yun? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, if I may, there are certain barangays with uh, three or more there are certain barangays with three or more polling places, uh, Madam Chair. Not unlike in small barangays, that the canvassing are usually done in the polling place by itself, in the elementary school. So, wala pong transmission of the results. Uh, there will be just, in, just in case, uh, based on our pilot uh, testing guidelines, there will just be manual uploading of the results. In, in big barangays, where there are three or more polling places, halimbawa po sa isang barangays, may apat na schools. Yung apat na schools na yun po, isa lang po ang canvassing area po doon, maaaring sa isang eskwelahan doon sa apat na eskwelahan na yun. We are going to conduct uh, canvassing in that particular uh, uh, polling place, in that particular elementary school. So we have to manually upload the results uh, in the three, from the three barangays so that this will be consolidated in that polling. Yes, I understand. But if you're going to automate it, yung transmission, yung voting, automated. 
Yes, Pagkatapos yung transmission dun sa canvassing uh, precinct, Manual. automated din? No, 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 no. Manual uploading only. Manual. Tapos pagdating dun sa canvassing, manual or automated? Uh, automated, uh, Your Honor. There will be a consolidation system that will consolidate the results. Uploading from the SD cards the results. Is there a real savings in time and uh, cost? Based on our time and motion study, if you are going to uh, conduct a manual election, if we are to finish the voting by 6 o'clock, we are going to complete the counting by more or less 9 to 10 o'clock in the evening. If you are going to automate, just like our previous experience, by seven, by 6.30 to 7 o'clock, if, if the voting is to end by 6, then we will have the result already by the precinct. Yes, Senator Tulfo, please. Yeah, uh, Chairman Garcia, anong difference dun sa manual uploading versus automated? Dun sa manual, hindi kaya uh, magkakaroon ng problema dun, discrepancy? Kasi may human intervention? Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair, Your Honor, sa question po na yon. When you say po, uh, Madam, uh, Mr. Chair, uh, Ma Madam Chair, Your Honor, manual uploading, you are going to get the SD card, and the SD card will be physically brought to the canvassing area. So, if po, um, uh, Madam Chair, nasa polling precinct na ito, yung machine, you are going to get the SD card and bring the SD card doon po sa, sa canvassing. So, uh, manual or physical intervention will only happen doon sa pagdala po ng SD card, sa pag uh, manually upload. We cannot po transmit electronically because it will cost a lot of money po. Mas mahal po kapag ka electronic transmission. So, siguro po, tama po yung fear din po, uh, Your Honor, Madam Chair, ay uh, yung pagdadala lang ng SD card. Uh, pagdadala ng SD card from one precinct to the canvassing. Doon magkakaproblema, uh, Chairman Garcia, yung hawak-hawak yung SD card at itatransfer doon sa lugar na kung sa itatransmit na. Mm -hmm. eh, baka magkaroon ng salisihan, magkaroon na ng kuwano ano ng magic-magic, ika nga. So, how can we avoid that, sir? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, Your Honor, before po, manually upload yung pong SD cards, the machines will be printing again, just like the ordinary uh, automated election, 30 election returns. And therefore, before uh, the SD cards will be brought to the canvassing center, which is very near the polling precinct, all the political, all the candidates, uh, representatives or watchers will be entitled to copies of the mm -hmm. election returns. So, nandun po sila, allowed silang magbantay at yes, uh, uh, i-monitor po yung transfer from para bago i-upload. Yes, Madam Chair. Your Honor. That's right. Okay. Yun lang po, uh, Madam Chair. Yes. Uh, Tama makasingit. Oh, sige po. Oh, sorry, sorry. Later. Later lang po, Madam Chair. Um, so sa bagay, hindi pa naman natin testo, no? Kailan ninyo balak i-testing na ito? Anong may, may date na ba? Madam Chair, Your Honor, during the conduct of the BSKE also, simultaneous with the BSKE, doon po kami magpa-pilot test with uh, two barangays. Okay, you're going to do this in October 30 also? Yes, Madam Sabay Chair. Sabay-sabay? Hindi man napakagulo? Uh, we are going to have only three places. No, but I'm confused. Is this a pilot or during, if you're doing it on the same date, it's the actual election? Yes, Madam Chair. Tama ba yun? Aren't you required to pilot all new experiments? Uh, but Madam Chair, we, we, can, we can always pilot uh, outside. Didn't you pilot it previously? I've never heard of a pilot during the election at the same time with the same results. That's no longer a pilot. Yes, Your Honor. Uh, only in two places in Dasmarinas, Cavite, Paliparan, and uh, one in the a very large barangay and in Project 6. ...of trying another way of doing things aside from the purely manual method that we've been accustomed to. Pero kung testing yan, dapat naman unahin sa election, no? Huwag naman mag-testing during the election, nakakatakot naman yata yan. Baka magic-magic nga yun, eh. That is, At uh, hindi pa tayo sigurado kung paano mag-work. Siyempre, uh, iron out pa yung detalye, yung transmission, sino magbibit-bit niyan. That, Ang COMELEC, wala na naman sasakyan. Kanina naman sasakyan, ilalagay yung mga SD cards na mahiwaga. Um, can we please not pilot during the election proper? Actually, Your Honor, that's right. Uh, we merely approve in principle, the end bank the conduct of uh, automated BSKE in three areas. But the uh, bank uh, had not yet approved 
the guidelines for the conduct. And therefore, during our discussion, by the end of I do not want to preempt the action of the NBank. Definitely, surely a member or members of the NBank will raise this issue that we should conduct the pilot test ahead of the BSKE. Yes, we've piloted every single experiment that the COMELEC has undertaken. And these are very large places. The Badas Marinas Cavite is an nayon. Ang lalaki ng barangay sa Quezon City, itong pasong tamo ang nandito, may ikatlo pa raw o talagang dalawa lang to? Dalawa lang po, uh, Mr. Ayun na eh, kinakabahan kasi yung mga taga Quezon City at yung Dasmarinas kung paano gagawin. Eh yung pala, eleksyon na mismo. Alalahanin pa natin na October 30 ang eleksyon, undas. So mas lalong magulo yung panahon na yun. May pilot, may hindi pilot, tapos may papunta rin sa cemeteryo na milyon-milyon. Paano ba yun? Yes, Madam Chair, we will definitely take seriously the advice of the good uh, the chairperson because we are going to still approve the guidelines, uh, Madam Chair. And therefore, what we are saying is we are going to pilot test, pilot in the sense that this is the first time in the history of our Barangay and SK election to conduct automated pilot tests automated election in two places, but we are going to test whether it is really feasible before the October 30 Barangay and SK elections. So in other words, magkakroon po kayo ng dry run? Yeah, yes, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Meron naman po, because by February 25 also, the election in Cavite, the special election, is automated din po, Madam okay. Chair, uh, Your Honor. Ch Chairman, sir, um, yung sinasabi niyo po, yung SD card, Tapos uh, dadalhin po yun sa isang uh, section na kung saan doon i-upload yung SD card. Gaano kalayo po yun? If, uh, From point to point? Yes, uh, Madam Chair, uh, Your Honor. May mga eskwelahan po, may mga barangay po, isang school lang. So kung isang school lang po yun, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor, if there are three precincts in that school, sa isa pong lugar doon, so for example po sa opisina ni principal, doon po yung canvassing. So meaning to say, the SD card from precinct 1A, precinct 2A, precinct 3A will be manually uploaded, brought physically to the office of the principal there in the polling place. Yung po, yung, yung po ay kung yung uh, tatlong presinto halimbawa po ay nasa isang polling place, sa isang eskwelahan. But what if there are three schools in one barangay, sa tatlong schools po na yun, uh, katulad po sa Dasmarinas, so yung pipili po ang komisyon ng isa sa tatlong schools, doon po mangyayari yung canvassing. Kukuhanin po yung SD cards mula sa mga machines sa iba't ibang presinto sa tatlong schools, dadalhin po doon sa isang eskwelahan. Doon po i-upload. Okay. So, paano naman po yung seguridad noon? Yung pong magdala ng SD card, dapat po meron silang escort, police or military to make sure na hindi po ma-hold up yun o hindi magkakaroon ng salisyat. Dapat may kasama din po uh, yung mga a kandidato doon para mag-observe yung kanilang mga representatives. Tama po, uh, Madam Chair, Your Honor. Definitely, we will ensure the highest uh, uh, security uh, arrangement. Ganyan, ganyan din po yung nangyayari sa atin new, during the 2022 elections and the previous elections of automated. Uh, pag po hindi nakapag-transmit electronically ang machines, ina-upload po manually. Yung kinukuha po yung SD cards, dinadala po sa bayan, dinadala sa City Hall. More or less, ganyan din po yung security uh, arrangement preparations na gagawin namin. We will ensure that all the watchers of candidates will be present when the SD cards will be brought. And uh, bago po namin gawin yon, all of them will be, have, will be having copies of the election returns as printed by the machines. Okay, Madam Chair, bago ako punta doon sa kabila, meron na akong yes. konting hirit. Medyo Thank you very much. Off topic to ng konti. Yes. Kasi uh, I've read several articles in the past uh, na kalunos-lunos po yung itsura ng tanggapan ng COMELEC, dilapidated. Ano pong balak nyo doon? Kaawa-awa po kayo. Na, kasi yung ibang mga, exactly, nagre-rent. <clears throat> Correct. Samantalang yung ibang mga agency na katulad din ninyo, importante yung ginagampan ng uh, uh, responsibilities, may mga sariling building at kag magaganda pa, Madam Chair. Na, kahanga-hanga. Yung COMELEC na para sa akin, isa sa pinaka-importante ng ahensya, eh, Mukhang kawawa. Wala ba kayong balak na pagandahin man lang po or magkaroon kayo ng sariling building? 
Sir, Madam Chair, you know. Yun nang we work out namin eh. Nakailang uh, hearing na kami dyan. Uh, hinahanapan ng pera. At uh, ang DBM, buong ningning na umaten ngayon, mm. sana natukasan na nila ang kadatungan. <laughs> Ako. Madam so, Chair, Your Honor, uh, maraming maraming salamat po sa concern nyo sa Commission Election. When we face the House of Representatives, meron po silang integrity bill. Meaning we have to ensure that the Comelec has full integrity and independence. We submitted a, an, a budget of 21 billion pesos for the construction of all COMELEC uh, offices in the entire country, Bawat Municipio po, and all the office, offices of the provincial election supervisors and regional directors. That's 21 million, billion pesos for the construction of the building only. Ang problem po namin, Madam Chair and Your Honor, wala po kaming mga lupa. And so, misan po, and we will, we will admit, misan po, yung mga LGU pa ang nagbibigay po sa amin nung mga do, do donate. Doon na nagkakaproblema, lupa. Madam Chair. Kapag sila'y tumanggap ng donation from the LGU, syempre si Mayor, si Gob, ang lagay, ganun-ganun na lamang. May utang na loob po sila, beholding po sila doon sa taga-LGU, mga taga-LGU, and therefore, pwedeng, alam niyo na, ayoko lang dugtungan pa. <laughs> Maliban pa sa lupa, kung minsan, kulang-kulang talaga yung uh, COMELEC employees. So, humihiram pa sila ng contractual Yun. job orders at iba pa galing sa provincial or city kung, government. Kung minsan pa yung, Madam Chair, yung mga appliances doon, furniture, e eh, complements ni uh, Yorme o ni Gob, e eh, sana po magkaroon talaga ng seryosong budget ang COMELEC. Nang sagay maging in totally independent sila, hindi na po umaasa, hindi na po beholden sa mga taga-LGO na nagpo-provide sa kanila ng mga kakulangan doon sa kanilang tanggapan. Di ba, Mr. Chair? Uh, Madam Chair? Chair, Your Honor, yung po ang kalagayan, the sorry state of the uh, Commissioner election. We have 6,200 employees and uh, even the main office of the COMELEC, kami po'y nangungupahan. So, wala po kami mga sariling uh, dahan-dahan po. We have at least several, at least four or five regions na dahan-dahan namin pinapagawa ng mga uh, building but a building uh, two-story will cost at least 60 million pesos to construct. So, okay, yeah. uh, sorry to interrupt. Na, naisip ko lang, kasi tagal na natin, long playing na tayo dito sa topic na to, nakakaiyak na eh. Uh, nagiging telenovela na siya. Kung kaya, ano kaya kung gumawa na tayo once and for all ng multi-year plan, at least until the end of the presidential term, sabihin natin, Yung uh, umpisahan, yung malaking lugar, kasi wala pa naman ako nakikita ang plano, daing tayo ng daing, pero yung actual plan na year on year, baka kayanin 1.2, baka kayanin ng 2 billion, malay mo, di ba, unti-unti, eh, ay maisisingit natin yan sa GAA, uh, gawin na lang natin multi-year, iplano muna natin pinaka-urgent, yung talagang, oh, sumasang-ayon yung budget, ha? mukhang may pag-asa. <laughs> Oo, <laughs> sumatango eh, si Attorney Chris eh, parang, parang totoo, parang may future. Kaya ta, what if we uh, ask the infrastructure section of COMELEC to make a plan apropos of this urgent and important matter? Uh, make a multi-year plan, ideally three years, uh, if not at least five years. Siguro naman may papatayo na tayo in the span of three to five years. Uh, kahit medium term, hindi naman instant ang uh, lahat eh. So, let's make a plan. Umpisa natin with a plan. I have an almost magical belief in plans. Pag meron ng uh, plano, kahit pa paano, na bibigyan ng budget pa, unti-unti eh. Uh, Madam Chair, yes, uh, Your Honor, we are, we are going to submit. We have a plan. We prepared. Wala pa ako nakikita we're going to submit, uh, Madam Chair. Ala, ang problem po natin is because we have ev election every three years. We always spend, uh, if, for example, by next, by 2025, we'll be spending a lot for the automation of the 2025 election. So uh, whether or not the national government will be able to provide us, plus our COMELEC building, which was already given a go signal, which will cost the government 8.9 billion pesos, and then we're going to submit. Uh, we're going to submit that's, to the committee. That's, that's always been the problem of uh, complex budget. Uh, we should lock in some capital outlay for these offices, at least the most important, biggest ones, once and for all. Uh, dahil alam rin natin yung capital outlay para tayo nagre-rely sa smartmatic. Kaya tayo na uuwi sa panguupa. Uh, so maybe uh, we should start working on that too. Thank you very much, uh, Senator Tulfo, for bringing that up. And uh, yes, uh, that's part of our agenda later on. Um, 
in any case, let me ask na lang for a plan. And then uh, palibasa nga si uh, si na DBM at least yung yung uh, tatlong attorneys natin na narito. Eh mukha naman nakangiti eh. Baka naman may future yan kapag uh, na-stagger ng 3 to 5 years. Ah, uh, gawa na natin ng, pa ng paraan. At least yung pinaka-urgent unahin na natin, yung malalaki. Well, pinaka-urgent kayo, no? Kasi informal settlering kayo diyan sa opisina ninyo sa totoo lang. And then uh, perhaps the rest at least on a regional basis, the very large regions. And um I wanted to go back to the preparations of the uh, COMELEC. I'm a little bit alarmed by the fact that the pilot testing will also be the election. Hindi pala pilot yun, totoo ng eleksyon. Nakaka-nervyos yata. Isa pa, uh, itong automated election system na gagawin uh, sa pilot testing, sa Smartmatic na naman ba yan? Uh, no, Madam Chair, we're going to use our machines. The machines uh, we purchased, the 98,000 machines were are owned already by the COMELEC. Madam Chair. Okay. So, our own 98,000. Yes, Madam Pero Chair. Pero hindi naman lahat gagamitin, ano, dun lang sa tatlong barangay na sinasabi. Yes, uh, Madam Chair, in Das Marinas will be using 303 machines, 100, okay. uh, 101 of which Can are continuous. pilot testing at saan manggagaling yung budget? Uh, wala po yun. It will be taken from the regular budget po natin because from the uh, COMELEC budget for the BSKE, Madam Chair. Kasi po, uh, yung balota po that will be involved in District 6, 45,000 balots lang po yon. Dito po sa Cavite, it will involve mga 50,000 balots lang po. What was the criteria for choosing the three barangays? Small, medium, large ba yan? Urban, rural, bad internet? What uh, What was the basis? Kasi uh, alawa sa Tasmarinas, eh, di halos magkahawig yan. Tapos yung pasong tamo, parang uh, naisip ko lang, lahat yan eh urban. Lahat yan, malalaki. Paano yung small, medium, large at saka yung rural? Yes, Madam Chair, it's actually the small, medium, large and uh, one in... One in and, and, and the NCR and the other one in outside of the NCR. Okay, just two quick questions regarding these uh, pilot testings and uh, the attempt to uh, automate the uh, Barangay and SK elections. Um, ang karamihan magiging manual pa rin. Tama po ba? The entire uh, country will be manual except uh, the, the two uh, places in the country, Madam Chair. Yes, but uh, as we said, sana yung pilot, gawin namang pilot. Wag naman totoong eleksyon, nakakatakot mag-eksperimento ng eleksyon. Um, what security features, if any, has the COMELEC placed on the manual ballots so that their authenticity is not assailed? May additional features ba tayo maibibida sa taong bayan? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Aside from the NPO uh, uh, NPO in, uh, placed uh, feature of the in the ballots. What's the NPO? Sorry, National Printing Office, madam. Ah, well, okay, yun lang. Meron pa po ang. Eh, pero hindi naman bago yun NPO na rin dati. Eh. Meron pa po ang chairman of the commission election. Sorry, Me, uh, the chairman of the COMELEC likewise had uh, uh, put in place uh, his own um, special marking, security marking in the ballot. Yes? No, because NPO has been printing in the past. Yes, I was just wondering if there's an additional security feature. Is there any way that we can guarantee the authenticity of the ballots distributed? Because there are some people who have other ballots or other materials that have been printed for a long time, hold over. Eh, iba na yung itsura nun, iba na yung supply ng papel sa mga na-print ngayon. Although we're at 90%, sabi po ninyo. So that being the case, Eh, baka makalusot yung iba't ibang uri ng balota kapag ganyan. Uh, isa po sa mga nilagay po na, na very important feature ngayon, na wala yung ibang printer sa buong Pilipinas, yung ascending number of the, uh, the serial number of the ballots. So ascending po yan, wala pong merong ganun sa Pilipinas except the Banko Central ng Pilipinas and Hindi the National Printing. Hindi ka may serial number ng balota? Yes, uh, Madam Chair. No, pero sabihin ng attending? Uh, from the small to the bigger number. And then the watermarks, which is always the consistent Dati feature. Pa rin yan, diba? Yes, Madam Chair. Watermarks, luma na rin yan, diba? Yes, Madam Chair. And likewise. I'm just looking for additional, no? Because uh, there were questions in the past. 
the, mar the marking of uh, the, of the comic chairman uh, madam chair ganoon talaga secret ba yon nobody knows madam chair <laughs> the chairman okay yeah um, the other concern is that uh, in the past, during uh, Barangay and SK elections, the COMELEC is inundated by disqualification and cancellation of COC cases. Usually, uh, in the case of the SK, as we know, that they are overaged, underaged, or non-residents. So, uh, how is the COMELEC going to reduce this uh, wave of cases that will inevitably ensue? Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, question, Ayo. Number one, po, we 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 made it a point, including in our general instructions, we instructed all our election officers to refuse to accept the certificates of candidacy of SK candidates who, based on the records of the Commission election, are more than 24 years of age. Tama po kayo. Uh, during the previous election, we received almost 4,000 disqualification cases involving overage. Uh, SK candidates po. Madami po kasi, Madam Chair, 24 years old, 24 and one day, 24 and one month, nagpapile pa rin po ng candidacy. Ngayon po, we will refuse to accept. Therefore, the filing of the candidacy is no longer ministeri a ministerial duty on the part of the COMELEC. As far as SK is concerned, Barang sa barangay po... Tapos yung non-resident, di ba issue rin yun? Kasi yung iba studyante o nagtatrabaho sa labas, uh, Pwede bang i-disqualify na yun at the outset or refuse to, uh, as you said, uh, accept their COC at the outset? Pag po not registered voters, uh, Madam Chair, automatically we will not accept the certificate of candidacy based on the record in the uh, uh, on file with the COMELEC. Dapat nga ganun, pero dati, di ba tinatanggap kung ano-ano? We are willing to take the risk, uh, Your Honor. Sabi nga po namin, let them go to the courts. Let them question our action. Uh -oh. uh, this is for the first time that the COMELEC will not consider the filing of the candidacy, Madam Chair, as... Pag hindi registered voter at maliwanag sa birth certificate, we will not accept. Na, wag na, kasi kayo rin ang mahihirapan sa bandang uli. Paulit-ulit nag uh, sa surface yung mga pangalan. Yung pala, eh, disqualified naman at the, be at, the out at the very beginning. And Madam Chair, uh, con uh, concerning po your concern, we intend also to have the filing of the candidacy by July. Mas maaga po. Okay. So that we'll be able to resolve all disqualification cases more or less. Oh, and especially mga nuisance cases uh, the earlier. Ayaw na po natin masama na naman yung mga pangalan ng nuisance candidates. Okay. Kasi dyan tayo nahihirapan. Ano? Last uh, question, ano yung plan... A, uh, B, C, D. Uh, alam natin na October 30 is uh, in the middle of the typhoon season. Kasagsagan ng bagyo yan. Kapag binagyo, anong mangyayari? Magpo-postpone? Anong gagawin? Um, Madam Chair? Bakalas ang katutak na special election yan, given the uh, weather that's uh, uh, inflicted both uh, Visayas and Mindanao of late the earthquakes in the north and now in the south as well. Paano kaya? Anong uh, mangyayari? Magpo-postpone? Anong plan B or whatever? That's right, Madam Chair. Under Section 5 of uh, the Omnibus Election Code, we can postpone the election in view of force majeure, uh, terrorism, violence, and other analogous causes. Yes, and likewise, under Section 6, we can declare a failure of election in uh, uh, certain areas, but definitely, kung bagyo po yun, uh, that's a force majeure, and therefore, we can reset the election. But resetting can only be done 30 days after the occurrence of the force majeure. Yes, with all due respect, I don't think this is entirely unpredictable, no? So, baka umabot ng 30% mapopostpone. Kasi, di ba? Yun ang realidad ng bagyo. That's the typhoon season. And we know we have over two dozen. What will we do then? Uh, Madam Chair, we are going to submit to the, to the committee uh, a, a detailed plan of action, uh, as correctly pointed out by the Honorable Ch uh, Chairperson, a detailed plan of action in the event that there will be uh, a storm, there will be uh, calamities, or which can be predicted uh, during this time, or even a force majeure, oh, we're going to submit, Madam Chair. Kasi to be expected na yung bagyo niyan eh, pag October, di ba? At saka undas pati. Paano yung ilalayo yung eleksyon dun sa mga pupunta sa cemetery? <laughs> Isa Stop, ba Madam yun? Chair. Ang, daming, uh, ang daming crowd control niyan. Including po yung mga teachers. May mga teachers po, Madam Chair, na kinakailang umuwi 
doon sa mga teachers, mga... Uwe, yun na nga. Tapos yung mga pulis, uh, naka-red alert sa undas, naka-red alert rin sa eleksyon. Parang ang hirap yata ng logistics nito. How do we manage this? Yes, Madam Chair. We are going to submit a comprehensive and extensive plan Tapos of action. Tapos babagyuhin ka pa or lilindol. Uh, parang uh, gahol tayo nito. Yes. We're going to have an early deployment. We, we usually authorize an early deployment of all election paraphernalia, uh, Your Honor. That's right. And I, uh, unfortunately, the DILG doesn't seem to be present, but sana magplano uh, na kayo kasama ng DILG kasi magkakagulo yan eh. Yes, Your Honor. We're going to coordinate with the DILG. We're going to have a command conference, oh, likewise, with the PNP and the AFP. Masabihan kami kung paano para at uh, an early date, we can disseminate the information and ask the LGUs and uh, the voters themselves to make alternate plans because it could be chaotic. The uh, Register Anywhere is the other project that uh, concerned us here, and that is the... Uh, uh, worry by uh, many uh, local officials, district officials, and so on. Is this going to be applicable for the for the barangay and SK elections? Uh, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, we implemented uh, the register anywhere program in the entire country with the, uh, in NCR in five uh, poll in five uh, malls in NCR in Region Eight and in Region Five. Uh, it's a very successful uh, project, which we intend to implement in the entire country after the res during the resumption of the registration. But how do we ensure that uh, only re valid and uh, qualified voters are able to register and avail of the RAP? Uh, Your Honours, before, uh, Ms. Madam Chair, before we forward the names of the applicants to the Office of the election officers in the entire country because we were able to design already a system, a program for that. The, the All of these teams will undergo verification in the list of uh, voters for the entire country. Yes, uh, I think this was introduced by the chairman at the previous hearing in August, and uh, we've been discussing this over uh, time. However, there are still major concerns about uh, multiple registrations, baka mag-flying voters sa iba't ibang lugar, the uh, fraudulent transfers uh, that could occur um, where residents of one barangay municipality registered to vote in yet another barangay municipality, and uh, the inability to uh, verify the registration or application from the place of origin to the new place and vice versa. Um, how are we going to manage all these concerns? Da, da, tama po kayo, Madam Chair. Yan din po yung concern ng NBank when we uh, approve the guidelines. We included in the guidelines that before forwarding the names to uh, the election officer, for example, of Sulu, we are going to verify from the N NLRB, the National List of Registered Voters, the name of that particular voter. Supposedly, Your Honor, dapat po i-AFIS namin. Kaya lang po yung AFIS po kasi yung Automated Fingerprint Identification System, it will entail at least mga two weeks Bago po magawa yun. So, the national list of registered voters po namin, i-verify. So, if uh, once verified na siya po ay, ay uh, hindi naman double or multiple registrants, we will forward. But however, however, even if verified po, Madam Chair, na siya ay double or multiple registrant, we are going to forward still the name of the voter in the office of the election officer kasi wala po tayong power magtanggal na, mag decline ng pangalan kundi po sa ERB election registration board with the advice that this person based on the verification is a double or multiple registrants and it's up to the election registration board madam chair based on republic act 8189 to to decide on the fate of this applicant madam chair parang ang gulo nun, ah. Parang ang gulo yun. Pag libo-libo na yan, each and everyone itatanong, paano ba yan? Parang napakagulo eh. We can... uh, we're all very, very concerned uh, uh, about the safeguards for uh, uh, the prevention of multiple and fraudulent registrations. And uh, certainly, while we appreciate the effort to make convenient and to um, engender uh, greater involvement and participation, nakakatakot din eh, di ba? 
So, ano kaya magagawa? Uh, what are the safeguards against error and uh, um, all these other problems that uh, we're already anticipating? Madam Chair, before mag-act din po ang Election Registration Board, meron po tayong, again, nabanggit na po kanina po, uh, automated fingerprint identification system, which is very, very effective po. But you yourself said that it'll take two weeks plus plus. Be, uh, yes, Madam Chair. Before I forward po, uh, ng main office ng COMELEC, sa uh, election officer, for example, of Sarat Ilocos, ipe-verify na po mo ng main office namin uh, dito po sa aming Information and Technology Department and the Election and Barangay Affairs Department whether this person is already a registered voter based sa National List of Registered Voters, NLRB po. So pagka po, kung ano man po yung outcome, we will we will forward the findings before the election officer. The election officer now who, who happens to be the chairman, Madam Chair, of the election registration board will be the one to they, they are the ones to, the ones to decide. It sounds like a really laborious and time consuming uh, exercise. Um, is there no quicker way to do this uh, that's simpler, more efficient and actually doable? Uh, Madam Chair, uh, uh, the problem po kasi is under Republic Act 8189, with all due respect, it's a requirement po talaga that uh, the final say as to whether to approve or disapprove of the application belongs to the Election Registration Board. So, yes po. But how do we um, make things a little bit easier and quicker for him? Kasi napakagulo nito, sabi nga ninyo, yung AFIS medyo matagal, tapos pupunta pa sa national, tapos babalik na naman sa kanya, ang gulo yata ng prosesong to. We will guide uh, our election officers, Your Honor, when we forward the names of the uh, prospective... No, clever and efficient as they are, I uh, truly believe that uh, it's a rather circuitous process. Wala bang mas mabilis? If only, Madam Chair, the law is amended, Republic Act 8189. No, but even failing that, how do we uh, just give the Election Registration Board? Wala ba, nating, wala ba tayong maibigay sa kanila na ma madali lang, na may final listing sa kanila? Parang ang gulo nito, pabalik-balik yung listahan eh. Actually, Madam Chair, supposedly meron po silang list ng voters in the entire country. How Yun na nga, pero pag nag-register anywhere, paano yung mga flying voter, multiple registration, uh, fake, paano kaya yun? Is there a way for them to know uh, right away rather than referring to all these other sites and persons and groups? Uh, before, Madam Chair, before the passage of the data privacy law, pinapayagan po namin ng lahat ng election officers namin nationwide uh, to have this official list of voters nationwide to bear, for them to verify. But however, Your Honor, because of the experience in the past, na isa lang po ang makatakas na data doon that will practically violate the, the data privacy of uh, voters. So we are so very careful when, whenever we, and that's why sa main office lang po namin bine-verify yung lahat ng mga, mga voters, uh, na applicants for as new voters, even whether regular registration or sa Register Anywhere program po. Point of information, has uh, the Register Anywhere project been piloted previously? And no, Your Honor, only uh, during the Jan December 12 to January 31, uh, re uh, resumption of registration. Saturday and Sunday, uh, Madam Chair. And uh, what were the results? What were the problems encountered? Kasi nga, wala namang maayos na pilot to eh. Sumabak na tayo dyan eh. Which we all appreciate. We understand that we want to have as many involved as possible and that everyone exercise their right to vote. But as a general rule, COMELEC is required to pilot every new experiment, isn't it? Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, with all due respect, napaka-successful naman po ng register anywhere. Ang mga problems po na na-encounter, wala po yung mga nakita na double multiple, pero ang naging problem po, Madam Chair, usually walang ID or identification card bearing the address doon kung saan po sila nagpapa-register. For example po, the prospective voter is from Albay, 
hinahanapan po ng ating mga, ng ating mga tao sa Register Anywhere site. Ayun na nga, yun, na, yun nga yung sinasabi ng iba, na antayin na lang muna yung National ID. O magsimula lamang kung saan may National ID, kasi nakakatakot nga daw yung ganto At uh, maalintala yung election kapag check ng check yung uh, election na uh, yung ERB natin. Um, mahirap din po ipagbaka sakali, Madam Chair, sa National ID. Pero ang hirap naman na walang pilot din. Basta sabak na lang tayo dyan. Nakakatakot naman itong mga eksperimentong sabay-sabay. Um, yes, Madam Chair. Uh, we appreciate the concern of the Honorable Chairperson. The, yung pong ginawa namin pilot is actually technically just to test whether our system is now ready, our people are likewise ready, and whether this can be implemented uh, nationwide on a per-region basis, Madam Chair. Right. Are there any comments from the NGOs, Lente, Namfrel, PPCRV? Uh, please feel free to uh, join us. NCIP, parating problema ang ating mga IP kasi nga walang mga ID. Uh, Director Dingal, al alam natin parating uh, na mga problema tayo, mga birth certificate pa lamang, eh, hindi mahanap eh. Yeah, is uh, there anyone who'd like to uh, join in? Please feel free. Yes, Attorney Elnas, meron kayo dadagdag? Thank you. Kanina pa kayo bulong ng bulong dyan. <laughs> Share naman. Good, good, good morning, Your Honor. Uh, actually, when we implemented the... Uh, before we implemented the Registration Anywhere project, we pilot tested it within our... Uh, sa COMELEC lang po, yung system, yung process, and we simulated it. Ako, with, you know, but within COMELEC lang, hindi, hindi pilot yun. Yes, uh, we test mo na, uh, Madam Chair, yung system, yung process, tsaka yung procedure, and doon mismo sa venue, uh, taking into consideration the space, the accessibility, at tsaka yung mga PWDs, mga seniors, lahat ng ano, uh, areas of concern tinitingnan natin bago namin in-implement itong registration anywhere project. And aside from that, Your Honor, uh, each and every registration anywhere venue, we provided them, the teams, we provided them with the national list of registered voters wherein right there and then makikita na kung registered voter na siya sa isang area, sasabihin na na you're no longer qualified unless you will apply for transfer. Okay, sabihin natin dun sa bago niyang uh, uh, presinto, may listahan na ng national, tatanggalin na siya dun sa dati? Ganun ba yun? Uh, Tapos, paano ma-inform yung dating uh, pinanggalingan niya, yung uh, precinct of origin? Yes, Your Honor. Dalawang system yan, Your Honor. One is the technical side because kukunan siya ng biometrics. Then the biometrics of that person will be transmitted through file transfer protocol. That's the Wala bang automatic? Pag, uh, yan, pag tinanggal yan, nung uh, new precinct, dapat... Wala bang central database yan? Uh, mayroon tayong central database, Your Honor, but again, sabi ni, ni Chairman Garcia, it's not right there and there. It's just a notice to the election officer that Ina this eh. person, because it will pass through the election registration board. So, notice mo na sa election officer na ito nag, naglipat na, then during the election registration board hearing, sa kanan niya tatanggalin yung pangalan na naglipat na. And doon naman sa kabila, idadagdag niya yung pangalan at saka biometrics na nakuha ng registration anywhere uh, teams natin. Nako, Attorney Elnas, alam ninyo na mahihirapan ko eh. Ma mahihirapan ito sa plenary. Pag na-raise itong question na to, dapat mas maayos yung answer natin. Ah. Uh, mahirap yung pagtanggol to dahil uh, medyo magulo, no? Uh, at, at kung may amendment kayong hinihingi, wala naman na ibibigay sa amin itong sinasabing amendment sa 8189 na required ang uh, election registration board na mag-verify ng voters list. Um, I have no proposals from COMELEC, so please, if there are amendments that are suggested, they should be submitted timely. Yeah, Attorney Elnas, maraming tanong dyan. So, kung maaari, gumawa lang ng briefer with the safeguards and uh, other mechanisms that could protect the sanctity of the ballot. Thank you. At least the voters list. Okay. Sige. So, I think uh, if uh, the chairman has anything to add regarding these uh, um, 
elections. I think there are only two items that occurred in the news. Firstly, the uh, COMELEC announcement, I think last week, that premature campaigning would be in effect. Uh, what date would that be? From the date of the filing of the certificate of candidacy. You said you would have early filing in July. Yes, Madam so, Chair. From July? For, uh, if there will be filing of candidacy from July 1 to 5, because the end bank will still have to decide the exact date. Uh, upon the date of the filing, if the filer, the candidate, had filed his candidacy on July 5, on July 6, that candidate would already be considered a candidate. And therefore, will be violating Section 80 of the Omnibus Election Code on premature campaigning, Madam Chair. Okay. Um, the law states that the candidates are only allowed to campaign for 10 days, Deba. Right? Yes, Madam Chair. From October 11 to October 10 to October 19, Madam Chair. Oh, so, sorry, October 21 to October 29, Madam Chair. So, uh, I think... Uh, the materials displayed ahead of that period will be removed and cases filed. Is that correct? Yes, that's correct, Madam Chair. It is the belief of the Commission that the case of Peñera, Rosalinda yes. Peñera versus the Comelec, is applicable only in automated election. And therefore, because we are, a, we are going to conduct the BSKE manually, then you do not apply the Peñera versus Comelec, which says under the decision of the Supreme Court that a person becomes a candidate only on the first day of the campaign period. Yes, but despite Peñera, the reality is you seem to be inclined to embark on a mixed type of election so that Peñera would then apply to the Smarinas and, uh, and uh, Quezon City, at least at the, in the barangays where you are going to automate. That may be the ano case. Yun, that may be the case, uh, Your Honor. So, iba yung campaign period doon sa tatlong barangay, iba doon sa rest of the country? Parehas naman po. Ah, kahilo naman yata. Parehas naman po, Madam Chair, yung campaign eh, period. Eh, sabi ninyo, eh, Peñera only applies to manual, uh, to automated elections and not to manual. And the whole country will be manual except for three chosen barangays, in which case, those three chosen barangays, papano yung uh, rules for uh, premature campaigning? Then in that case, Your Honor, because of the Peñera doctrine, because it's automa automated po siya. Barangay sa iba? Automated po kasi siya, uh, Madam Chair. And so... Pwede uh, may experiment na lang ninyo yung automated. Huwag naman yung i-apply sa eleksyon. We're going to conduct a MAC uh, testing, MAC election, uh, in the same barangays, Your Honor, before the conduct of the October 30 I barangay in SK. I don't think that answers the uh, problem. Uh, yeah, we can't have a different set of rules for three barangays versus the rest of the country. Surely that's not feasible. Yes, Your Honor. We are going to uh, decide on that, uh, Your Honor. The statement of the chairman is merely uh, without prejudice to, the, to whatever the final say of the end bank is. If the end bank will say that in all, whether it's the three barangays and in the entire country, we will, we will, apply, we will not apply the Peñera case, then... We will not apply the Peñera case, then let them question our action, Madam Chair. Because we have not yet decided on that uh, yes, issue. Yes, that's post facto. I mean, siyempre, magkakasuhan pagkatapos nun, pero nangyari na. Can yes, Madam Chair. Can we update it at an earlier uh, date than uh, conduct orderly elections instead, no? so where the rules are clear uh, for all participants? Yes, Madam Chair. But uh, we already approved the, the the guidelines that as far as uh, the Peñera case is concerned, that will not be applicable for the conduct of the manual election. So yes, I understand uh, that you've come to that conclusion, which can also be assailed, by the way. Yes, that's right, uh, Madam Chair. Okay, so uh, I uh, think my uh, last point is simply to inquire about the safety of our election officers given the ambush in Maguindanao del Sur. Have we undertaken any further uh, uh, security arrangements? Mukhang nauuso na naman itong mga ambush, miski sa Norte, sa Cagayan, sa Apari, uh, yung Vice Mayor at uh, anim sila. Ganon din si Governor Adjong, nabalitaan natin. So, uh, papano naman yung mga hamak na municipal election officer May mabibigay ba tayong security na karagdagan? Kasi pasok na naman tayo sa election period. 
Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. During the conduct of the 2022 elections, we provided two security ex escorts for all our election officers in Maguindanao. Um, however, th there were several election officers who refused the security escorts. Uh, during the conduct of the plebiscite for the division of Maguindanao, we provided po kami ng security escorts. Meron din po kasi nag refuse ng mga election officers. Yung pong ambush and the death of our uh, election officer of Sultan Sabarongis. Uh, we are currently in close coordination with the provincial commander of the PNP and the CIDG and our committee on ban on firearms and security personnel in order to determine whether this is really election related po. So far po, is, walang... Is the chairman unable to make uh, security escorts mandatory? Di ba pwedeng uh, compulsory yan? Why should they have the choice of uh, of turning down security escorts? Uh, we will we will we will look into that possibility, Madam Chair, whether we can compel our election officers uh, security escorts. Dito ko sa pinal ng ninyo, kasi lalo na itong sistema ng manual, di ba? Bit bit nila yung balota, mas lalo na kakatakot, di ba? Siguro po, Madam Chair, uh, if I may, baka po kasi ayaw dahil yung iba magastos. Pakakainin niyo yung escort. O kaya alam naman... Ko yan, alam ko yan. O, o kaya naman natatakot sila, baka yung escort pa po yung... Yung ano, so medyo may mga ganun po, especially in those areas, Madam Chair. Eh, di ka usapin na lang, nipiliin. Pero they cannot go unattended. After all, uh, they are... Uh, they are uh, stewards of very precious property, the votes of the people. Yes, Madam Chair. We, we will uh, do everything to protect the... Of De, course... Usapin na lang, piliin nila kung sinong gusto nila. Basta may dala sila, hindi pwedeng ganon. Although during the elections, Your Honor, we always give our election officers an automatic exemption sa gun ban din po. Yung mga Which may or may not be a good thing. <laughs> Correct. Um, thank you. <laughs> Correct, Madam Chair. Um, yeah, I think we need to secure our election officers a little bit uh, uh, more tightly given uh, the situation. Uh, and it's no longer in um, segregated zones. It appears to be uh, an uptick in lawlessness almost everywhere. Um, thank you very much, Chairman. I think we need to go on to the other, uh, the other bills. I don't know. Are you going to be attending the alternative modes of voting for highly vulnerable sectors? Um, Yes, this, this is this is a carryover. I think Attorney El Nas was with me. We uh, already sponsored this in the 18th Congress. Um, for lack of material time, it failed to go through, and there were many questions. Uh, um, the expansion and uh, coalescing of we tried to fold no the special polling places as well as the accessible polling places para iisa na lang yon or less magulo tama ba i don't know uh, where we should uh, start with this and then uh, the early voting also to expand the early voting for highly vulnerable uh, um, sectors from two days to seven calendar days before an election. Uh, others have stated it at 15 days before the election. I remember it was two weeks in the House version, the last Congress. So, and uh, to uh, institutionalize the EAPP as well as the APP. I'm uh, recommending that given the fact that this was discussed quite thoroughly in the previous in the previous congress can we go into the twg on this already uh what are your thoughts from the commission uh committee secretary please can we go into twg on this uh given that uh, we had several versions already uh, more or less approved aside from the details yes comsec please yeah can you sit down a committee report was already issued regarding this during the 18th Congress. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, kaya na sponsor na siya, di ba? Yes, yes. And it, it also passed until the um, period 
period of interpolations. We're already at the period of amendments. Yes, we time. actually reached the period of amendments on this. So I would recommend that uh, we don't uh, go over uh, all the points because we're more or less of one mind, I believe, uh, despite the fact that these are freshly filed bills. Um, perhaps we go directly into TWG. Um, may I just ask for uh, some representatives or else I volunteer you. No, I'm just kidding. Sa uh, Comelec, sino magre-represent to work out these alternative modes? Our Executive Director, Madam Chair. Sige. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> Obvious ba? Uh, tapos, sino pa ang kailangan dito? Who else do we need to join? Um, I think we need the NCIP, we need a representative for the IPs, we need a representative from the women's groups, we need a representative from the Senior Citizens Council. So perhaps those who are here, if not yourselves, you can elect someone to join us for TWG so we can get this right. There were some rather peculiar uh, provisions that... Uh, were uh, mooted, and among them was that uh, women had to be visibly pregnant. So, uh, being of the belief that all pregnancies are actually high risk, I thought that was most peculiar. So, siguro dapat pag-usapan yun, nakakatawa eh. Okay. Um, tapos yung mga IP din, palibasa nga walang listahan, may mga, may mga uh, qualification na dapat yung mga IP in uh, far-flung, remote, hard-to-reach places lang. Eh, paano i-determine yun, di ba? Parang magulo din. Dahil wala namang listahan ng IP at saka wala namang sasabihin na itong IP eh, nag-aaral sa poblasyon kaya hindi siya kasali dun sa hard-to-reach remote. Medyo naguluhan din ako dun eh. So uh, if uh, there's any interest on your part, basta let's take care of uh, those concerns. Pero I think we're set to do TWG na kung okay na sa inyo. Dahil nga, nag-committee report na yan, nag-interpolation, nag-second reading, period of amendments na siya, kaya siguro i-refine na lang natin. May additional gastos ba yan? Kasi nandiyan, no? buong ningning ang ating uh, DBM na narito. Yes, Madam Chair. Uh, especially po, we will be push, pushing for the early voting for senior citizens, PWDs, uh, the indigenous peoples and pregnant women. Therefore, may additional gastos po yun. Uh, dahil sa babayaran po natin, I'm looking at the DBM, Madam Chair, babayaran po natin ang mga electoral board members na magsaserve if we're going to conduct the early voting sa senior sa kanilang vulnerable sectors by at least seven days before the election. And then may additional, uh, yun po yung mga additional gastos po. Natin. And then they will have to manifest lang. We are not going to conduct a special registration. They just manifest that they intend to uh, to, uh, to avail of the early voting. Just like you know, na hindi do nila sinasabi na mag uh, early voting sila kaya ng kakatarantahan ni. Eh. Po para pum local absentee voting po natin, Madam Chair. That, that they just manifest that uh, they will avail. Sa amin kasi, ayaw nila mag-early voting dahil gusto nila makita yung bilangan. Eh, wala namang VCM dun sa early voting. Hindi exciting. Eh, sa amin, parang nanonood ng sine. Yeah. Hindi ba we... Yes. Remember, Attorney Elnas, that uh, that hesitation was what we sought to address. Uh, the lack of VCMs at the early voting, di ba? Yung mga seniors lalo, gustong, mag -gust gustong gusto makita yung mga binoto nila eh. Yes po, ma'am. Uh, suggestion din mo po, dagdag sa TWG natin, and of course, yung sinabi ni Chair na may dagdag gastusin talaga ito, uh, ang sa amin is, sa eskwelahan, isang araw lang itong eleksyon namin, but yung eskwelahan natin, karamihan pa ng eskwelahan natin, hindi pa PWD friendly. Wala pang mga ramps, wala pang mga railings, etc. Actually, so, the recommendation is not to limit it to school buildings. Di ba ang pinag-usapan natin, halos lahat, meron ng isolation center dahil nga yeah. sa COVID. E di gamitin na rin yun, yung mga covered court, multipurpose hall, na uh, lahat sila ground floor eh. Kasi ginamit na natin sa COVID yan. Dapat i-identify na lamang yun. Dahil nga yung mga school building, aakyat ka kung minsan four floors eh. Hindi talaga kakayanin. So, sama siguro natin, ma'am, yung ano, DepEd dito. 
uh, DPWH. Hindi lang DepEd kasi yes. nga yung local government uh, yeah, yeah, uh, minsan ang, may, uh, ang ang namamahala ng mga isolation center eh. Yes. Eh nakahanda na yun, gamitin na lang natin yun. Yes. Di ba yun ang usapin dati? So kasama siguro dito. Huwag lahat yes. school building kasi nga aakyatin nila yan eh. Hirap na hirap na nga eh. So, DepEd po ang pwedeng isama ang DepEd. Then yes, DepEd. But what about the local? DIL, yeah. DILG. True. Uh, DILG ang kausap dito natin, ma'am. That's right. Uh, I think you need the representative kasi sila may-ari ng mga multipurpose hall at saka auditorium, stadium, at iba pa. That's, that's correct, ma'am. Okay, so with that, we constitute the TWG. I'm wondering, speaking of leftover business from the 18th Congress, may natira rin na umabot na sa plenario yung kuan, yung raising the 3 peso ceiling on uh, per voter. Naalala nyo, is there wisdom in reviving that effort? Definitely, Madam Chair. We have Kasi lokohan to... na yung 3 pesos, eh, di ba? Hindi na yung makatotohanan. It. Yes, Madam Chair. We fully supported being... Did we refile? Yes. Um, you think we should go back to that? Because ang nangyari doon, nag-object yung mga senador kasi umabot ng bilyon-bilyon ng kada senador. Do you recall? Okay lang sa President and Vice President, umabot sa senador, eh, saksaka naman ng mahal nung uh, uh, pinantay-pantay yung gastos sa Senate at sa presidency. Yes, Madam Chair. I think it's 20 pesos and 30 pesos. Kaya nga, naging billion eh. Kaya hinimatay yung mga senator, ayaw na iboto. Ano kaya magagawa? So, let's try to work on that as well. Uh, I'm perfectly happy to revive that and refile it and talk to my uh, peers. But uh, if we could address the problem that uh, reared its ugly head in plenary, and that was that to run for the Senate, you would need several billion, just like a uh, president would. Yes, I think I refiled it, actually. Now I just checked. Na refile nga. Na refile nga. Kaya lang, tulungan lang inyo ako sa argument ng, uh, ng uh, senador. Unless we carve out a different section for the senators. Kasi national pa rin. So, lolobo talaga yung gastos nila kasi same basis, same uh, same rate eh, for the president. Unless we make another rate for the senators. Then maybe, again, uh, uh, meron pa po, Madam Chair, including the criminalizing, uh, the filing of uh, nuisance candidacies. Right. Yes. Uh, has that been filed? Parang wala pa. Yes. Okay, so we can discuss that. Uh, siguro, Comelec, if you could help us with the uh, with the uh, campaign expenses, the campaign finance, no? You have a campaign finance office, di ba? Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Couldn't they uh, help us with that? Yes, Madam Chair. Um, there's another issue pala, and this rests solely with Comelec, and this is holdover also from uh, the 18th Congress while we're at it. Yung uh, IRR dati, para sa TV and other media ads. Um, as I recall, uh, parating bone of contention yan, at saka laging huli ang COMELEC maglabas ng rates. So, papano kaya yun? Definitely. Can we detail it a little bit? Maraming palusot ang mga TV station, hindi nagko-comply. Marami silang uh, kung ano-anong dahilan, kung bakit hindi mag apply sa kanila yung preferential political rates. We're going to uh, draft early the uh, guidelines uh, in the implementation of Republic Act 9006, and we're going to furnish a copy this committee, Madam Chair. The reason I ask is, um, I believe it's IRR derived, di ba? Pero at the same time, kailangan ba ninyo ng batas dyan para mas may ngipin? Kasi hindi nga nasunod eh. If you can amend 90, uh, 9, Republic Act 9006, Madam Chair. Which is the Fair Elections Act. Kaya nga, pero paano? Could you help us with the amendment required? Yes, Madam Chair. Alangan naman ilagay yung rate sa batas. Nakakatawa naman tignan yun. We, we will not uh, include the rates, Your Honor. Sige, so you give me the amendment. It will likely take time, but uh, regardless, at least nandyan na. And uh, the other thing is to, if you could review na lang yung IRR ninyo, if you're criminalizing nuisance candidates, eh, dapat yung mga hindi nagko-comply rin dito while we're at it. 
Uh, yung IRR din yan. Okay, with that, we are left with the Comelec field offices. Um, I think the, is that where the DILG come? Ah, no. No. This is the DILG. Yeah, okay man yan. Um, we take into consideration the DILG comment pala just uh, derived um, from ASEC Puno regarding the preparation for the 2023 Barangay and SK election. In the meantime, um, do the employees have anything to add? We're all, we're all fully in support of the field offices and other offices. Hindi lang naman field, but the national office ng uh, COMELEC. Yes, Mr. Ramirez, please. Good morning, Your Honor. For the COMELEC Employees Union, we, we have long clamored for suitable office spaces for, for our field offices. And um, we also... Um, request this honorable Senate to fast track the, the salary upgrading as well of Comelec employees. That's right. The uh, salary upgrade has been uh, pending. Also, the ba may request naman talaga ever since ng uh, additional positions, regional, provincial, municipal. Yun nga yung mga job order at casual na hinihiram lang ninyo sa local government at kung saan saan. Yes, Your Honor, as an additional to ensure uh, independence and integrity of COMELEC offices, we also need to hire additional election assistant positions. Yes, but this all uh, boils down to budget, no? I mean, uh, I think the COMELEC is fully aware of these problems, and so are we. May we get comment from the DBM, please? So, teka muna, ang gulo natin, ang dami natin pinag-usapan. Uh, okay, unahin muna natin yung offices, pero napag-usapan na yun. We've agreed um, to make some kind of uh, multi-year plan, ideally three years. Uh, I don't know, we can establish some targets for the first and second year. Um, yes, so yung una, yung tungkol sa offices, magplano muna tayo ng three to five years, ano? Um, okay, and then secondly, with regard naman to the to the HR complement, um, this is the salary upgrade. Was an estimate made already for the salary upgrade? Yung SG24 na PES to Director 2, magkano lahat yun? Kahit dahan-dahanin lang? Yung salary upgrade, you are behind eh. You're not uh, you're not part of the salary standardization, di ba? Yung mga SS4 and 5. Ah. Sorry? We are part of the salary Oh, you're, you're compliant naman, di ba? Yeah. But there are requests. Uh, there are requests for upgrades. Truly, uh, Madam Chair, we, we designated Commissioner Maceda as the chairperson of Comelec reorganization, uh, restructuring, and whatever, simply because we would like uh, to present to uh, DBM the entirety of, uh, the, of certain improvements in comp uh, uh, personal complement. Once again, um, we're fully aware of the reality of our financial situation and the exigencies of uh, the post-COVID period. So. Uh, pwede bang i-multi-year din yan? I mean, hindi naman pwedeng bibiglain eh. Yung salary upgrade. Sino ba talaga yung sobrang uh, liit ang sweldo na absolutely non-commensurate to the work they're doing or the uh, qualifications they bring to the job? Just an exa example, uh, Madam uh -huh. Chair. Lawyer position in uh -huh. our law department or even in the offices of the local uh, COMELEC, salary grade 18. Wala na pong kukuha, Madam Chair, na lawyer na salary grade 18. Uh, accounting... Ay, yung computer pa. Ang baba rin ang sasahod. Wala raw computer maintenance specialist. Masyado rin mababa. Pati po accountant sa amin, uh, Madam Chair, salary grade 15 or 16. Samantalang ang dami-daming nag-a-abroad na. Okay. So, um... Assistant po namin, Madam Chair, salary grade 9. Ah, talaga? Opo. Meron pa bang ganun? <laughs> okay. Um, 
Yes, Commissioner Maceda, in as much as you're in charge, maybe enjoin you to uh, focus on the most urgent so that uh, at budget call, which is very, very soon, at the end of March, uh, maipasok na natin kahit paano, no? Kahit konting, uh, kahit konting upgrade man lang, kasi nga nakakatawa naman itong mga salary grade 9. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. Um, we were tasked uh, just recently, and we were intending to begin our task by uh, conducting a process review first internally. And ideally, if you could get a third person to look into our, uh, to match the uh, competencies with what's being paid right now, because uh, I just learned. Uh, Spoken to the Civil Service Commission, for example. Yes, ma'am. Uh, actually, we were trying to benchmark mark uh, our positions to the other constitutional commissions. And we have also touched base with the Comelec uh, Employees Union so that we're doing this uh, uh, side by side together. No? Um, uh, based on that, Husana, malalaman po natin kung um, the existing uh, uh, plantilla and uh, classifications uh, match what, what are really required. Yes. Un unfortunately, the... Uh... The budget period is upon us. Uh, we don't really have much time, although I appreciate the process you're undertaking. The reality is we really have to submit it as soon as possible. The other thing is that uh, the budgeting process, whatever DBM says, is brutal. You actually have to make very, very um, horrific choices. Voila, it's the way it is. You shed blood. It's how it works. I mean, mamimili ka talaga eh, kasi hindi kakayanin lahat eh. That's the reality, di ba? So yung pinakahirap talaga, yung mga salary grade 9, sa akin, I mean, unahin na muna natin yan. And then yung mga critical, like the computer specialist, wala na kayong maha-hire niyan eh. Kag pag ganin ang sweldo, nag-aalisan na lang yan. So I don't know, I don't know how you will establish your priorities in consultation with the employees union, with the civil service in comparison to other constitutional bodies, as well as the DBM. Pero understand like we do year on year, that uh, some really uh, horrific decisions have to be made. Wala, eh, wala kang magawa, eh. We're prepared to make the horrific decisions. Yes, uh, Madam Chair. Meron pa nga po kami salary grade 1. May salary grade 1 pa po kami. Di meron pang salary grade 1? Yes, Madam Chair. Sino? The utility, oh. utility workers. Clerk is uh, salary grade 4. Madam Chair. My goodness. Uh, with the cost of living now, I really don't know how these guys survive. I mean, uh, you're enabling poverty. <laughs> so. Whatever the choices it is that we will make, we'll start from the bottom. Oh, nga. Sakit naman nung salary grade one or four or nine. I think this is uh, unbearable. Um, I would like to ask the DBM to give us a leg up also here. Um, the creation of new positions obviously requires the CSC as well as the DBM to participate. Ano? So have you undertaken that effort na sa COMELEC, sa HR ninyo? Kasi additional positions in the regional election offices are enjoined by the bill of Senator Revilla, HR manager, budget, finance, process server, etc., watchman, driver, at iba pa. Ito yung mga hinihiram sa LGU eh. Laging nakakasual at saka J.O. to, di ba? Kaya, uh, this creation of positions, meron ba kayong wish list na niyan? Yung pinaka-urgent din? Yes, Madam Chair. Kasi iba-iba yung version ng mga bill na narito, but at the end of the day, it will have to be you at uh, the COMELEC to tell us what to do. Meron na po kami, uh, Madam Chair, na plan of action submitted to us by our regional directors, provincial election supervisors, which will, as correctly pointed out by the Honorable Chairperson in the bill as proposed, Meron po kasi kaming mga more or less 28-man contingent for the regional office, the same contingent for the provincial. Yes, Madam Chair. Kaya lang po, it will require the office, Madam Chair. Kasi po kung ganun kadami ang personal contingent, tapos wala naman pong opisina, 
hindi rin po makakapag opisina po. The office of an election officer will can can accommodate mga four to five individuals. Sino mas malaga yung office mas malaga sa tauhan? Sabi ko sa inyo, it's brutal. Eh. This budget process is really, really painful. It's uh, which child do you love more? Which uh, leg will you cut off first? We're going to abolish certain positions, uh, uh, Madam Chair. Such as po? Uh, for example, po, special investigators. Okay. Wala na pong kailangan special investigators sa commission. So might as well create computer analyst uh, positions. Kasi which are kulang, kulang kayo sa IT, ano? Yes, Madam Chair. Technical positions dapat Tama. po, Madam Chair. Uh -oh. Madami na po kaming ganun. And Commissioner it's Maceda. It's uh, to outsource, at least for janitorial services, drivers, and so on. Can you not outsource this? Or uh, do it on a consignment basis for other equipment. I mean, that's been done by uh, many government agencies uh, for non-critical, not highly technical jobs that can be farmed out. You are, after all, farming out to NPO, for example. Medyo mahirap lang po at sabi nga niyo po, Madam Chair, very painful process because po, for example, security. We have internal security po. Mahigit po mga... 200 security personnel we have. So if we are going to outsource, then uh, we are going to retire most of our security personnel. Yung po mga utility workers, madami rin po kami mga utility workers, and so we're going to retire most of them. So medyo mahira po yung, um, yung ganong situation din po. But you're going to be uh, establishing new offices, or at least that's the plan, in which case uh, I think other modes of employment and uh, um, contracting should be uh, explored, uh, as we have in other government agencies, uh, and even the LGUs are doing the same, because uh, it's simply uh, too expensive or uh, inconvenient. So I'm not suggesting that uh, you uh, retire everyone wholesale. I'm uh, simply saying that we need to look at uh, cheaper ways to do things. And uh, the DBM is listening, so I have to say these things. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And uh, we will rely on the suggestion recommendation of Commissioner Maceda. And his team will definitely furnish the, the uh, Committee on Suffrage and Electoral Reforms and People's Participation, the updates and development on this uh, matter, Madam Chair. Salamat. Um, are you in receipt at the Commission um, of the uh, position submitted by the ILG mentioned earlier? Meron na ba kayo nito? I just saw it this very second. We have not yet received. Um, yeah, yet. perhaps the, the, uh, the uh, Commission should be provided, Comsec. Please make sure the Commission is provided uh, the DILG observations regarding your preparations for the BSKAE. Um, meron silang mga comment dito at uh, yung mga initiatives and inputs nila, maybe you should take them into consideration as well, Attorney Elnas and the rest. Oh, okay. Yes, uh, just please, if you could take care of it and then... Uh, Hand me a copy as well so that we can have a look at it and jointly uh, um, resolve some of the uh, more fundamental issues. So, uh, Marami Salamat, I think uh, this is about it, no? Uh, unless there are further comments, I invite the NGOs, Lente, who, uh, that uh, has been atypically quiet this morning. Uh, any comments from Namfrel, PPCRV, Lente, and CDA? I haven't heard from you. Baka may itatagdag po kayo. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Ito na po. Hindi na po quiet. But with regard to the Comelec field offices, we humbly appeal to the Comelec to finalize at least the transfer plan. Uh, it has been also included in the draft uh, law. May transfer plan provision na rin po sa draft law. Na ang staggered window po is for five years. And upon the hearing last 18 Congress, DBM has been suggesting it to extend it for 10 years. At least para paunti-unti po. Lupit naman ang 10 years. Parang wala naman nangyari. It's in another generation. <laughs> Apa. So, in lang na po. But with regard to the TWG, we also appeal to institution, institutionalize the vulnerable sectors office already existing in the COMELEC 
that it may also be included in the which office sorry the vulnerable sectors office ah okay that's right that's right that's mm. been discussed also in yes, the people's conference yes po, madam chair uh oh yeah thank you very much po. thank you okay yes chairman madam chair yes uh, we had been requesting the dbm uh for the creation formal creation of the vulnerable sectors office and the uh, campaign finance office try to imagine madam chair we have a 38 month contingent only of the the campaign finance office reviewing 48000 statement of contribution expenditures filed by candidates um, and political parties and party lists and at the same time we have to likewise formally we have to formally create also the is the intent to create a full blown department? Yes, Madam Chair. Yes. Mas lalong maduguna naman yon. With the DBM, Madam Chair. They're pretending not to hear. Sige. Okay. I, I think we're all behind you, uh, Brisa. I think uh, uh, we are all trying to find ways and means. Kahit dahan dahan na lang. Pero wag naman 10 years. Parang tagal pa nun eh. Si Attorney El nasa tako, walang wala na by then. <laughs> okay. So, uh, any further comments uh, from the Comelec? Anything we haven't dealt with that we can actually deal with this morning? Madam Chair, uh, we would like to thank the Honorable Chairperson for this opportunity. Uh, certainly we, and definitely we will support all legislative initiatives uh, for purposes of improving our electoral process and would like to invite the Honorable Chairperson during our uh, election summit by March 8, 9 and 10 because the Honorable Chairperson will be invited to cut the ribbon or the, and to be head, that's to be headed by Commissioner Nelson Celis. Cut the ribbon for what? For the... May building na kayo? Uh, no. <laughs> I exhibit, exhibit uh, Madam Chair, for all our, for all those who wanted to participate in the uh, for the procurement of our machines, just in case we'll be given the necessary budget. Yes, Madam, uh, March eight uh, in the morning, uh, you'll be cutting uh, the ribbon for the opening of the election summit that will be happening on March eight, nine, and ten to in uh, Sofitel. 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 Okay. All we'll, right. uh, we'll send you the uh, formal invite. Sige. Okay. Save the date na po. Pero let me know na lang what, uh, what's happening at the summit para I can be coherent early in the morning. So thank you very much, everyone. Uh, there being no uh, further business, we herewith suspend this uh, hearing. And uh, thank all those who have participated this morning. Thank you.